Happy Friday, everyone. Welcome. If it's Friday. If it's Friday today, with us we have Special Representative Elliot Abrams, our Special Representative for Venezuela. He has a few remarks for the top. He'd be happy to take your question. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Thanks. I want to uh, start by mentioning the um, announcement that Interim President Guaido made today about an agreement uh, between the International Federation of uh, Red Cross and the um, Catholic Bishops, the Episcopal Conference in Venezuela, <clears throat> to try to get humanitarian aid into the country. Uh, the initial announcement said uh, this would be health-related aid that would uh, be provided to 650,000 Venezuelans. Uh, as you know, um, Guaido has been calling for this for weeks and weeks, and we in the United States made an effort to get aid in, uh, most of it at uh, Cucuta, Colombia, and the regime uh, prevented it. Um, the Red Cross has said that uh, it will permit no interference with the distribution of the aid, uh, which we think is great because our uh, problem with the uh, Venezuelan regime uh, in this area has been that it does not distribute aid on the basis of need. Um, it, rather, it politicizes the aid and gives it only to uh, the people who have a thing called the carne de la patria, uh, which is to say they're supporters of the regime. Uh, so we thought that that was not um, the way the Venezuelan people were going to benefit. This looks like a real uh, opportunity, and we think it is a, um, a response to the efforts that uh, Interim President Guaido has been making. So it's very welcome. Uh, we hope it works, uh, and assuming that it does, which we do, uh, the United States would be happy to... Um, uh, give some of our aid into this uh, method of reaching the Venezuelan people, because that's the purpose of, of what we were doing in getting the aid nearer to, uh, to Venezuela. I think the, the international community is uh, more generally um, ready and anxious to do more to help the humanitarian situation um, in Venezuela. You may have uh, seen some news reports about a new um, UN uh, report on the internal humanitarian situation, um, which said, uh, quote, preventable diseases such as tuberculosis, diphtheria, measles, and malaria have resurfaced in the country and are on the rise, as is hepatitis A due to the lack of access to safe drinking water. Now, obviously, the um, uh, humanitarian aid that addresses the health situation isn't going to solve that question of clean water. That is partly uh, related to the blackouts. And I should just mention, as you know, the blackouts have continued all over the country. Uh, the regime's efforts to, in a sense, to keep them out of uh, Caracas have not been successful. They've had uh, partial blackouts there, too. Um, the electrical power system is simply in very bad shape because of the years and years of uh, lack of maintenance, lack of investment. Uh, and <clears throat> the likelihood is that uh, blackouts will continue. Um, this aid is not uh, going to solve the problems that Venezuelans face. Uh, the kind of aid that is needed for a broad recovery of the Venezuelan economy um, really cannot be put in place until uh, the regime is replaced by a democratic uh, government when uh, I think you'll see the international financial institutions and um, other donors really move in to, um, to try to help the people of Venezuela. Um, I guess I'd mention one other thing as a start. I've been asked uh, in the last uh, day or so about the um, ruling by the regime that uh, Juan Guaido cannot participate in Venezuelan politics for 15 years. Um, that's consistent with the regime's efforts to uh, eliminate uh, all democratic voices and all opposition forces 
and voices in Venezuela. Um, I don't imagine that Juan Guaido is deeply worried um, because uh, the Maduro regime, while it might be around in 15 days, is not going to be around in 15 years. So it's a ludicrous, uh, ludicrous uh, effort on the part of the regime to um, keep Mr. Guaido quiet. Okay, <coughs> questions? Uh, thanks for doing this. Um, uh, there have been reports in recent days about uh, oil refineries and uh, the, um, the the U.S. stance on that, that the U.S. is telling, uh, is, is encouraging uh, oil companies not to uh, not to be doing uh, business with, with Venezuela. Can you just talk a little bit about uh, the U.S. effort uh, when it comes to oil, when it comes to international companies, and the message you're sending them, whether sanctions could be enforced for international companies dealing with Venezuela? Well, we, you know, we have our sanctions, and um, one of the main purposes is to deny the regime money um, that it does not use for the Venezuelan people. Some of it ends up in foreign banks, and uh, much of it is used simply to keep the regime in power. Um, so the first thing we did was we stopped paying them. You know, the largest source of cash had been the United States, uh, buying about half a million barrels a day. Uh, we have had conversations with foreign um, oil traders, with foreign governments, um, really along the same lines. That is, uh, you should be supporting interim President Guaido. You should not be supporting this regime. You should not be um, buying oil from this regime and giving them cash. And we've noted that we have a uh, wide, broad net uh, with our sanctions. And so we've warned people, be careful. Um, not to get caught in that net by activities that you may think don't come uh, into it, but actually are caught by it. So uh, we, and I think we've had a fair amount of success, I would say, in, um, in getting companies to reduce the amount they're buying, uh, and in some cases uh, end uh, the purchase of uh, oil from the regime. There were some grace periods, you know, when we, when we introduced the um, sanctions, which uh, most of which are coming to an end. Uh, but it is correct that we have attempted to prevent the regime from, I would say, stealing the assets of the Venezuelan people and making off with them by getting cash in exchange for oil and gold. Matt. Thanks. Um, <clears throat> one, uh, two brief ones. Uh, how is the search for a protecting power Going. We're very happy with the way it's going, and, and uh, yeah. I wish I had an announcement. I don't, but the soon? diplomatic efforts – soon. The diplomatic – is Friday. But the diplomatic efforts um, are going well. Okay. And then secondly, I wondered if you could extrapolate a little bit from what um, National Security Advisor Monroe had to say this morning. Um, we strongly caution actors external to the Western Hemisphere against deploying military assets to Venezuela or elsewhere in the hemisphere with the intent of establishing or expanding military operations. Clearly, this is a reference to Russia, but um, does this mean that you're okay with Western Hemisphere countries getting involved militarily, whether it's the Cubans or the Nicaraguans or yourself? We have made it clear what we think of the Cuban involvement <clears throat> in uh, Venezuela. Well, then why is he more specific <clears throat> here? Why doesn't he say we caution anyone who doesn't agree with us against deploying well, this military was, I guess, assets to Venezuela? <clears throat> chronologically, it's a reaction to what happened a few days ago with the um, uh, arrival of the two Russian planes and a certain number of Russian uh, military people on the ground. We've been very clear uh, in our uh, condemnation of the role the Cubans are playing. Uh, that was not the subject of this particular uh, week. And just as it relates to Russia, Secretary Pompeo had a call with former Mr. Lavrov, was it a day or two ago? No, was longer. It two or three days ago? I think it was last weekend. Oh, was it last weekend? Okay. Well, in it, according to the U.S. readout, Secretary gave, delivered the same warning, said the Russians should disengage it. The Russians say that Foreign Minister Lavrov told us, accused in the call, accused the United States of trying to mount a coup in <laughs> Venezuela. And um, 
uh, probably not a surprise that you would disagree with that, but I'm wondering why is that not, uh, you know, why, why do you disagree with it? Why is the Russian argument flawed? There is one <clears throat> democratic elected institution in Venezuela, the National Assembly. <clears throat> That's it. Um, what the United States is doing is supporting the National Assembly and supporting the interim president and calling for a free election because what happened last May was not a free election. All the international observers agreed on that. So what we're calling for is a transition to democracy. <clears throat> That's not a coup. Okay. Um, and I mean, to get, to get instructions on democracy from the Russian foreign minister um, makes my day. <laughs> and you're still at 54? Yes, sir. The, but so the number is static, and you haven't had any success in convincing any, anyone else to join your... That's right. All right. Okay. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, also in the readout that, uh, in that conversation with the foreign minister and the secretary, the U.S. readout said that the United States will not stand idly by, uh, referring specifically to the Russian deployment to Venezuela. Um, what tools are available to the U.S. government to ensure that the U.S. is not standing idly by? <clears throat> well, we have a list of options that we've given the secretary. Um, and uh, I would say that there are a lot of things we can do, uh, certainly in the area of diplomacy, but um, there are things we can do um, in economic terms, in terms of sanctions. Um, I guess I shouldn't get into this much, um, but uh, no, we... <laughs> I get into it with the secretary, but that's a different story. Um, so um, uh, I would just say that, that um, we have options and that um, I think it's, it would be a mistake uh, for the Russians to think they have a free hand here. They don't. Thank you. Um, so with these Russian troops, we think there's about 100 on the ground. Do you, can you give us any guidance what equipment they brought? Uh, <clears throat> what they're doing there, and if we have any indication that we think Russia is planning to send more in the coming days or weeks? On the question of sending more, I don't know. On the question of what equipment there is, such information as we have is through intelligence, so I can't discuss it. As to what they're doing, one of the things they are doing seems to be, and we've thought this from the very beginning, um, uh, helping the regime with the um, S-300 um, ground air missile system, which apparently got all screwed up, sorry to use technical terms, by the blackout. Um, so I don't know what you'd call it, recalibration or resetting or in any event, technical assistance. Um, what else they're doing, um, you know, we're watching. How much of a threat do you see the Russian presence at this point <clears throat> being to what the U.S.'s goals are? There are not a gigantic number <clears throat> of um, Cubans. There are several thousand in the intelligence services, but their presence is extremely pernicious. The same thing is true, I would say, of the Russian presence. Obviously, this was, you know, about 100 people. One thing we can say is that their presence will do absolutely nothing beneficial to the people of Venezuela. It does nothing to address any of the problems they face, political, social, or economic. Um, it probably is a kind of shot in the arm for the regime. Uh, even though the numbers are not huge, because we've seen that uh, the numbers of Cubans, which are admittedly a lot larger than the number of Russians, um, have actually provided real assistance to the regime to do things it could not otherwise do or not do uh, nearly as well. So um, it, it isn't a very large number so far, but um, it, the potential impact is considerable. Which hour you were with. Thank you. Uh, could you give us some more details about the uh, agreement with the International Red Cross in order to prevent that this humanitarian aid is not going to uh, end up in uh, the Maduro regime hands and they are going to politicize the, the help? 
I can't. And the announcements that were made this morning are fairly brief. And I would have to say, uh, you've got to ask, as we will, um, Guaido, uh, the Venezuelan Red Cross, um, and the bishops uh, for more details about the distribution. Because obviously, we want it to be, we insist that it be independent. But the Red Cross has been absolutely insistent that uh, they would only uh, do this if they had no interference from the regime. So we are interested in the details, too. But it certainly sounds uh, promising. And it's the first uh, such agreement that's been reached. Is there any red line in, in this subject? I mean, if the U.S. see the, re the Maduro regime politicizing the help? Well, I would say we have the same red line that the Red Cross and the bishops do. Distribution has to be based on need, not politics. Uh, yeah. uh, you, you said that your main purpose is to deny the regime uh, money. Now, wh what is uh, going on uh, and what is your take uh, with the uh, oil dealings with India? especially the <clears throat> one of the biggest refineries, the Reliance refineries, which is supposed to be not only buying the oil, but also supplying the oil, Indian and European oils. Like we have reports that the ships are now at this moment being loaded in Venezuela. I would, I would say that we have had contacts with Indian companies and with the government of India, and that we have found uh, there to be a very considerable amount of cooperation. Um, which we are very happy to see. I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, I know that you and others in the administration have repeatedly said that all options are on the table, but I'm wondering with the Russian presence there now, do you feel that the United States is any closer to seriously considering or even exercising a military option? I'm going to leave it with the statement that uh, the National Security Advisor made and not comment further. Two questions. Thanks. Uh, my name is Alex Hoffman. Uh, Maduro's oil minister was in Azerbaijan last week where he announced that he's going to divert some of the oil that originally bound for the U.S. to Russia. Is this something that is bothering you? And my second question, I was actually surprised by seeing Maduro's oil minister in Azerbaijan, <laughs> you know, in which, where he attended OPEC event. May we recognize Gaido's government first? Are we, what hopes do we have or what we are doing to A, prevent Maduro's cronies from traveling abroad, particularly, you know, when it's about international events. And second, maybe we can secure some mandate or some voice for Gaito's regime as well. Well, <clears throat> um, it's not surprising that there is an increase in oil trade uh, between uh, Venezuela and Russia, because the first thing, really, that the regime did after the imposition of American sanctions on Pena was to turn to the Russians and say, rescue us. Uh, and we know that um, uh, oil shipments from Venezuela to Russia um, will be on the increase. And we know that shipments of um, refined products, uh, diluents, gasoline, will also be on the increase. Um, that's predictable, given the relationship between the regime and Russia. In the international uh, organization area, you know, we uh, continued diplomatic efforts um, to persuade people and organizations to uh, give the credentials of Venezuela to the representatives of interim President Guaido. In some cases, we have already succeeded, like the Inter-American Development Bank. In others, we're working on it. And we have a, a good-sized campaign uh, to persuade governments, first, to recognize Juan Guaido, second, to then carry through with the implications of that recognition um, when it comes to diplomatic missions in, uh, in their own capital and when it comes to the way they vote in international organizations. That will be developing. You know, that's something we're doing. We do it every week. And as meetings happen, um, you will see, I think, uh, that we will have more successes of the sort we had in uh, Chengdu. And the number of countries that recognize uh, Gaido government is it still 54? Yes, or? yes. Hello, James. Um, I wanted to pick up on um, my colleague from AFP who was talking about um, the way that the US had reached out to trade, oil traders and companies and governments. 
Are you seeing, are you doing this because you're seeing additional leakage coming out of, or, or, are you seeing Maduro basically um, pushing more assets out of the country? What, what are you, yeah, what is well, behind this? Because um, it's it, not, it doesn't pertain to the sanctions. I mean, you're no, doing it's this all, in addition. Right. I mean, it's all very, I would say it's very logical. Uh, we impose our sanctions. What does the regime do? Uh, the regime tries to figure out other ways to get around them. It tries to find new customers. It tries to find new sources of uh, imports. Um, so what do we do? We watch carefully, and we can see ships moving, and we can see new contracts with new companies. And when we do, uh, we talk to shippers, or we talk to uh, refiners, or we talk to governments, and we say, you should not be doing that. So That's what we're doing. Seeing it with, I mean, how about naming and shaming a few? Um, you know, the first thing we do, uh, it's not going to work maybe in the case of Russia, but the first thing we do is talk to people. That is, we don't, we don't go in and sanction them or threaten them. What we do is go in and say, look, here's the situation. Here's our policy. Um, and we would really appreciate your cooperation. And we do say, look, the sanctions net is wide. And uh, you don't want to get caught in it. And we would appreciate cooperation. And in a very large number of cases, we get it. So are you see well, what I'm, I, well, I'm gathering what you're saying is that you are seeing more kind of leakage going on. No, we're where, seeing efforts. We're efforts, seeing efforts. And efforts we're trying going to getting to assets shut out. Shut them off, yeah. Right. Um, and you're saying you're seeing ships and contracts and so on. Is that mainly to do with shipping out oil? Or is it, ca is, I mean, clearly not cash. Um, I mean, the, the, the regime is trying... It's, again, it's pretty logical. I mean, the regime is trying to do uh, what it can to get its hands on cash, refined products, other things it needs. Um, and uh, so it, it, one of the ways it does that is, you know, go to the Russians and say, how can you help us? Um, but uh, in other cases, you know, there is selling, there is reselling, um, there are oil traders involved in this, and we have pretty decent information about this, so we try to follow up and say, don't do that. So you, you focused on Russia and China. I mean, Russia I and Cuba. Russia, yeah. um, but China has just offered um, additional help over the last 24 hours. Um, uh, what is its role? It seemed to have pulled back. Now it seems to ha be kind of spiriting up to, to help again. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I will be persuaded of that when we actually see it. That is, I think the, my impression has been that the Chinese concern is essentially to protect the pretty considerable loans and investments that China has in Venezuela uh, for the future um, and uh, has not seen it as an area of geopolitical challenge to the United States, which appears to be the way the Russians see it. Um, so um, we'll see what the Chinese do. Okay. Last question, right, right there, please. Uh, Mr. Abrams, now that you've from Caracol, Colombia. Um, it's been two, over two months uh, since Guaido uh, proclaimed himself the interim president. Uh, recently, Germany did not uh, accept a, who he designated as an ambassador. Do you fear that this subject of the democratic transition in Venezuela may be losing some momentum internationally? I really don't. I mean, I don't know how one judges that scientifically, but how can one judge this? How many people are here today? <laughs> There's one way to judge. Column inches, very old-fashioned, I know, for today, but let's say minutes of broadcasts, minutes on the air. Um, Concerns, clicks, that's a good one. <laughs> Concerns that we hear. How many foreign ambassadors want to come in and talk to us about Venezuela? Um, I see no diminution of interest. I certainly see no diminution of interest in uh, the administration. That is a concern of the president, the vice president, the national security advisor. Certainly Secretary Pompeo spends a good deal of time on this and did uh, up on the Hill. I see no diminution of interest in the American Congress. So as I look around the country and around the world, I don't see it. I don't see any lessening of interest and concern. And one reason for that, I think, is the situation in Venezuela is dire. Uh, we, we have seen this worsen because of the blackouts. 
Um, every report, now we have a new UN report apparently, um, every report is filled with just horrible statistics about the suffering of Venezuelan people. So it would be wrong to turn away from this because uh, the effort that we're making here uh, really is on behalf of the Venezuelan people who deserve better and who are, uh, who are struggling to return their country to prosperity and democracy. Can you, can you, there, hold on a second. Right, no, he just said there was no diminution, but there's only 54 countries. It hasn't increased. 